it's such a pleasure to talk with you, especially about this show, because I feel like it's the kind of role where it feels like it could be one thing and then it ends up becoming a much richer and deeper experience. And so from your perspective, I want to know, like, how, you know, what was your first reaction to the show, to the, to, the, to the show, to the flight attendant? What was the growing experience of it like? I happened to be in L.A., which was total kismet. My husband was doing a play there um, and they told me that they wanted me to come in and audition with Kaylee. And I got the pilot and loved it. I hadn't read the book um, and was told not to um, because they the the book is amazing, but they've taken a departure from it. And so um, I loved the pilot, but it's interesting. I think our show, we all sort of joke that the word tone has been used to death about our show, but I do think it really is a very specific tone um, that everybody collectively figured out how to strike on like, right, that perfect sort of pinhead spot. Um, but it is a little bit hard to get on the page, but I think I immediately loved the character and I loved the story. And I had that feeling when you finish a script or you start a book where you just, you just are like a new television show where you want more and I feel like that is such a magical feeling when you're hungry to know more of the story and I was like oh that's that's something that you always search for I think in a project um and so that was sort of like the chef's kiss for me and I was super excited to go in and it was one of my favorite casting directors I've known forever who I think has incredible taste, this guy, John Papsidera. I went in and read with Kaylee and it was just like, it was like, um, almost like when they say you meet the love of your life. It was like, when you know, you know, like we just had that organic spark. Um, and I, and I, yeah, it was all just uphill from there. The whole team on the show was really exceptional. Um, from Steve to Susanna, who directed our first couple of episodes. And um, yeah, the whole vibe of the experience is really incredible. And I think we had a very bizarre growing experience in that we got five episodes deep into eight and then the pandemic hit. And then we were the first show back up and running in New York in the fall of Sweet Jesus, what is time anymore? The fall of 2020, yes. You did it, yes. Oh my goodness gracious. My brain is just like, I feel like we all have a lost year. Um, so that was a really interesting experience. And I think just bonded us all so much more because we had solidified this working relationship and these wonderful creative relationships. And then we all came back under these incredibly like stressed, bizarre circumstances. And everybody was just so game and so responsible and so excited to be back at work making this show. And I think that that kind of added this extra special layer on top of it and really just yeah, it bonded us all together in this really amazing way. Um, but I feel as if I've gotten super lucky from girls to this, where I've been able to be on shows where the characters are a lot. The point is to watch them grow, which I think is a really interesting creative challenge as an actor and always super fulfilling. And I think really exciting as, um, as a viewer. I mean, I personally love to watch that and we were really allowed by Steve and our writers and our directors and Kaylee and the studio to go sort of, you know, to reach really far in that regard. Um, And so I found the growing process on the show to be really scary and exciting and exhilarating and fulfilling. (laughs) That's great. Um, I want to go back to the audition. Because sure. I feel like chemistry is more common when it comes to romantic pairing, not necessarily friendship pairing. And I mean, first off, am I totally off base about that? And, no, no, uh, no, you're right. Totally. And for, so in that case then, like, what about making sure that you had good chemistry with Kaylee at the beginning? Like, what, 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 what how did that impact the experience for you? Um, I mean, it gave me 
a lot of faith in the show and made me feel like I was surrounded by like-minded people. I, you know, I spent six, I mean, seven total years of my, like the beginning of my career, essentially on a show about female friendship. And I think that it's something that's super, it's a topic that is incredibly rich and just an iceberg when it comes to storytelling. There's so much to say about female friendships, especially ones that are um, long that you've had since you were a kid. I feel like there's this very specific brand of friendship with women where you've been friends since you were quite young and you probably would hate each other if you met today, but because of your history, and the time that you've logged and the love that's there, it's essentially like a family member. You know, you're stuck with this person, but they also just push your buttons in the most insane way, but you love them more than anything. Um, and that's a very specific type of relationship. And I think, especially as we get older, our friendships as women are so important and they, they are so layered and dynamic, particularly if they are that type of friendship. And so I think making sure that to people who are intrinsic characters to the telling of the story, you know, of our show, that they have that type of organic chemistry is so important. The relationship between Annie and Cassie is so much about both of those characters' journeys throughout the show. And I feel like tells us so much about who they are individually by seeing it through the other one's eyes. And so I loved that I got to go in and read with Kaylee. And I think so much of our characters were very much born in that moment, at least particularly for me, because I was like, oh yes, this is how it goes. Okay, great. Um, and they, it was like the minute that they said action in that audition room, we both just kind of came alive with each other. Um, and then you know as well that that's someone you're gonna have so much fun playing with. What's interesting, too, is that, you know, playing that type of role can often feel like you're in a box of some sort or, you know, there, you know, I've seen you, we've all seen shows that, you know, kind of don't, don't let that character really grow outside of their relationship to the main character. But I mean, honestly, some of my favorite sequences in the first season were, uh, you know, and, you know, Annie in the FBI office, like showing them what's what, like, you know, and you know, at what point did you have an understanding that your character would get, get, to, get to have moments like that? I mean, pretty much from the beginning, you know, I got to read, I think initially the first five episodes. Um, and Steve Yaki was very clear that Annie's journey really amps up quite a bit in the second half. You know, she's sort of backloaded a bit in that regard. Um, but just in the way that they wrote her from the beginning, I knew that she was a bit of an onion and that they wouldn't just let her sit unpeeled, you know, that we were going to get to see the different layers of Annie. Um, and that was something that I was super excited to get to play. Um, and I think, you know, every character in the first season of the show, I think has a bit of, it's almost like a, everyone has a bit of a coming of age story for lack of a better term. You know, they all kind of, not to simplify it, but everybody like learns something about themselves and kind of grows and shifts in this interesting way. Um, and I think just as much as Cassie has that in like a super outward way, Annie also has that. And obviously they're related to each other and the way they both have it. Um, I think the way their relationship morphs speaks a lot to what they both go through and how they kind of settle at the end of the season. Um, so I always knew, um, Steve was very clear with me from the beginning. He was like, she starts quiet, but don't worry. Like, <laughs> She's got a lot to do and say. And I was like, all right, I'm not worried. I trust you. I mean, that's a huge thing though. Like, I feel like, you know, there, there, there are, I'm sure plenty of stories about people who go into a project like that with that level of trust and it ultimately doesn't work out. Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, I've had friends 
totally be screwed by that. You know, they've been told they're going to have a ton to do and they end up literally being like, all of my scenes are on a cell phone sitting in an office and I'm born out of my mind. You never know anything in this industry. There are so many people. I can't tell you how many times I've heard like, this is the next big whatever. And then no one sees it. And then the movie that was made for $5 that no one thought anyone would see becomes like the blockbuster of the year. Like it just, there's no rhyme or reason to what we do. And it's what makes it such a hard industry and also so exceptionally rewarding when it does work. And so I think at the end of the day, it's all about trusting your gut because, you know, all of the facts and numbers can point to X, Y, or Z. And you really just have to go with what calls to you. And after doing this for so long, a big factor in my choices in terms of jobs that I take are the people involved. And if I like the, if I like the material, obviously that's tantamount, but if I like the people and the material, I'm like, all right, let's do this. And so I just, I loved Kaylee immediately. I love Steve. I had known Susanna a tiny bit before I adored her. I loved the material. And so, yeah, I mean, I didn't get to see it on the page right away, but I was like, well, all signs point to yes. And my gut says yes. So I just got to go for it. Awesome. Well, I, I want to, I want to ask you about the status of season two, but at the same time, but first I want to know at what point did the concept of a season two feel real? Cause I mean, I, I remember at the initial, in the initial stages, there wasn't any firm talk of it. It was kind of a, we're looking at this as a limited series uh, kind of conversation, but that of course has completely changed. Um, I mean, I'm super jaded because I've, I grew up in this and I've been doing it for so long. Kaylee and I always joke that neither of us believe that a project is real until we're on set and the cameras are rolling. Um, so I, you know, they had started talking. I mean, there was always talk of subsequent seasons, at least from my side of things. Um, and of course you hope for that, but we also weren't sure if that were to happen, when it would happen. I mean, you're never really given as an actor a firm timeline on that. I remember, I feel like girls would, we would always get an official pickup like the day before the Golden Globes or something like that. <laughs> you know, right. it's like we would wrap and then we would be waiting, we'd be waiting. We'd be like, well, I think we're getting another season. And then like, Right. I, I always remember we'd be like getting ready and we'd get the call that we had gotten officially picked up. And of course you were like, I think it's going to happen, but like, who knows? Um, and so obviously we were all incredibly proud of what we'd made and we had hoped it was going to be successful and then people seemed to like it. Um, but you just never know. And so I would say it felt real when they picked us up. <laughs> of course. With that being said, like, I'm sure on set there were talks of like, oh, in season two, we can do X or Y. There wasn't a lot of talk about season two, at least not that I recall. I mean, I'm sure people were thinking about it, um, but I also think our show was a really big swing. You know, it's a very hyper stylized show. There's a lot going on. There are a ton of moving pieces. Our core cast is quite big. Um, Kaylee, who was slaying it on screen and working her butt off and was also like truly executive producing, not just in title. Like she was on every call, watching every audition tape. You know, there was everybody was all hands on deck. And then while we were finishing during COVID and trying to get the show out the door, there was so much happening. And so I think everybody was just super focused on making the best possible season one that we could. And I'm sure people like Steve and Kaylee and our other EPs were thinking ahead to season two, but I think um, you know, in the day-to-day -day boots on the ground, we were all just like really honing in on what we had to do in the moment. Gotcha. I mean, where, where does season two stand right now in terms of production? They're in the writer's room. The news broke that the show is going to be shooting in LA. So we're moving to Los Angeles. 
Um, and as of now, that's pretty much all I know. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just an actor. I go, I go where they tell me when they tell me to. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I'm sure it'll happen at some point this year, but I'm not totally positive on dates, but, um, but I know I have to go to, I have to move to Los Angeles for a wee bit. Um, and, uh, and that they've been writing away and I know they're having a great time. So I always am like, if I knew how to hack computers, I'd hack into Steve Yaki's <laughs> computer and I'd read the rough drafts of the scripts, but I don't, I'm sadly not Carly Kloss. So that'll have to happen in another life. You have the showrunner's phone number. Do you ever just text him? Hey, wouldn't it be cool if Andy did blank? Steve Yaki, our showrunner. Yes. Um, I don't really text him. I think I joke text him things about Annie. Um, sometimes also Annie never gets, Annie didn't get to go on any of the trips that they went on. So I'm often like, so this year when Annie goes on all those trips, so <laughs> I, I'm like, I, oh, I did text him that the other day. I was like, okay, cool. So wherever you guys decide to go this season, can I like, play whatever animal is in the background like we would just like <laughs> write me in an extra part or as like I'll be like an umbrella you know like you don't I don't even need a credit it's fine you don't have to you don't have to pay me for the day um or like last season before we started up I texted him um you know we got the call that we were uh coming back to finish our last three episodes I was like is it cool that I got a bunch of face tattoos and I cut off all my hair like that <laughs> you can just write that in right that's fine he's great I, I love Steve dearly um we all I think shooting through the pandemic made us all quite close so that's been very nice that is nice yeah. uh you know something I really appreciate about both the flight attendant and also girls actually is this idea of, you know, having a really close female friend, having really close female friends. And, you know, you touched on this a little bit already, but like how those relationships can be really complicated and sometimes to the point of toxicity. And, you know, when, I, I, I'm curious, like when people talk to you about girls in particular, you know, how often does the idea, does Shoshana's relationship to the other girls and especially the way they kind of did, you know, she did end up really sticking up for herself and moving forward without them. You know, how much of that, how much of that is part of the conversation? That's sort of tough to answer because I haven't talked about that in so long. You know, no one's asked me that question. And God, when did that show, when did we finish wrapping that show? How many years has it been? What it's is been time? Years. It's been a <laughs> few years. So I, yeah, so I haven't had that conversation in a while, but that was definitely a very specific choice that was made. I think something that we did talk about that is something I remember because it was discussed a lot like internally and also um, in press talking about the show is that Shoshana was always a bit of like the sleeper confident one. You know, I think she starts out the show because she's a couple years younger than these girls being so incredibly enamored by them. And then as she starts to grow, she starts to realize that they're actually just total messes and that they're sort of in this moment of stasis, whereas she's growing beyond them. And I think that's what we see sort of happen at the end of, of the show where she's like, I started out enamored by you. And then I realized, um, it's sort of like how they say, never meet your heroes. Mm -hmm. and in general, you know, especially with it a couple of years in the rear view mirror, you know, what is, how, how do you feel about girls, uh, you know, and it's, and the legacy it's had? The emotions are endless. Um, I feel, it's funny, it, it still almost feels a little bit like a fever dream at times. It was such an exceptional thing to happen to me and us as humans and actors. I think in a big way, because it was so unexpected and we were all sort of in the same camp that like, wasn't like one of us was incredibly famous. And then all of us, you know, it happened to all of us collectively at the same time. And 
um, I just felt so insanely lucky to spend my twenties on getting to make such incredible material and having it have such a positive response. And it really opened the door for what has become, you know, my career thus far. Um, and it really over anything, I think made me truly fall in love with making a television show. There's something really exceptional about, not that I don't love, um, you know, making movies, but there's something very special about getting to play a character over a long period of time. That's when it, when you're on a show where the character is allowed to, to grow and change and shift. Um, it's a, it's a specific type of challenge. It's hard to keep finding them, but finding them as they grow. Um, but I loved it. And we had the incredible luck of getting to have the same crew pretty much our whole six seasons. Um, you know, we had a lot of the same directors, we had the same writers and we just created this family and that instills this insane creative shorthand. Um, and it, it's just, I don't know. It's like making art on drugs because you just, you, you create this base and then you get to keep kind of like extending the lines within that you're playing within because you have this safety of this shorthand and of like this familiarity. Um, and I started to feel that on flight attendant, I think because, because we were working under such heightened circumstances of the pandemic um, and because it took us so long to film our first season. Um, and it was one of the reasons I was so excited for this job. You know, it's something I've searched for since Girls Ended because I did love so much spending that prolonged period of time playing the same character with, you know, that same creative family. And so I've really been on the hunt for another, I've been calling it my search for my next TV home. And when I read the script, I was like, oh, I really think this could be it. Um, and I got insanely lucky in that, I mean, we all did. It was that magical thing that happens that happened on Girls where every person involved creatively just adored each other. And there was this organic chemistry with all of us from like production design to costume design to all of the actors, to our directors. It just, we all melded um, and adored each other. And that just doesn't always happen. So I'm, I'm really excited that we get to make more of it. Absolutely. Uh, something about girls that I, I then talking about it makes me, makes me realize I've never really wondered about this, but you know, it, you know, that when the show came premiered, it of course had like this huge impact in just culturally people want, you know, we're talking about it in a way that we hadn't seen a lot of shows talk like it talked about before. Uh, do you feel like if it, that if girls had premiered like today, it would have had a different reaction? Or do you think that, that there's no other time period where girls would have worked than the time period it came out? I don't know. I mean, that's so hard to say, you know? I think the only way to know that would be to, to rewrite history and premiere it now and see what happens. <laughs> From your experience, what, what do you feel like the lasting legacy of girls wound up being? Probably still being formed, given that like it hasn't been that long since it's ended. But um, you know, I, I like to think, and it's one of the things that I loved so much about flight attendant and about this specific role. I feel like when girls came out, it, it came, it like proceeded and also sort of came out around the time that a lot of TV and film projects were being made that centered around female friendships. And I think, you know, just like I said before, that that's something, I think it's a topic that's exceptionally rich and layered. And especially as you get older, those friendships as women become so important um, and also can become very complicated. And I think a lot of times the friendships that you 
have had since you were young sort of start to crystallize in a way where you either are like, this is someone who I hate as much as I love, but I will have in my life for forever. Or this is someone whose relationship no longer serves me, even though we have so much history there. And I think girls really touched a lot on that topic. And I think that was something that drew me a lot to this job, just like you were saying about the chemistry reads, you know, I already, I knew that they were going to tell this female friendship in such an accurate and dynamic and rich way because they were having Kaylee and I chemistry read together. And I just think that it's a really fascinating topic that we don't talk about or show enough. Um, And so anytime I get to play in that realm, play a character, play like a relationship, a dynamic, because to me, like, I think one of the great love stories of Flight Attendant is actually the one between Annie and Cassie. You know, I mean, she does have this one with McKeel um, and with Colin, you know, she has those two men in her life, but I think great female friendships are just as much love stories as, you know, romantic ones. And I think in many ways, that's the legacy that girls left behind. And that's something that I sort of continue to search out and that I'm always excited to see and to be a part of. Excellent. Well, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. It's been such a lovely conversation. Yeah, likewise. Uh, uh, I do have a couple, I have, I have a couple of random roles from your earlier career or not even just earlier, uh, but recent career as well, that I'd love to ask you about if that's all right. Sure. Um, and one is, uh, I am vaguely obsessed with the movie Spartan and oh. uh, I, and I know I, I, I can imagine how you ended up in the cast for that film. Uh, but I was wondering what it was like to play quote unquote, better one woman. Oh, I mean, that was like, literally, it, it wasn't even like anything. That was like a random day that I happened to be on set with my dad and they like needed an extra to hold some goats. And so I did it. <laughs> It wasn't, you know, and I think it was like a couple hours of my life. Um, Yeah, that was like a last minute thing where like someone didn't show, like an extra didn't show up. And he was like, she can hold some goats. And I was like, what? I mean, I think I, I think I was like 11 or something. I don't remember. I was, I was very young. And I just stood there holding goats for a couple hours. You didn't have any prior goat holding experience. I had no you... prior goat holding experience. They didn't seem concerned with that, but they were <laughs> like, you know, but then I added it to my resume after the fact. Goat, hold, goat holding? Yes. Goat, goat holding. Yes. Has held goats. <laughs> I was like, this might get me another job one day. You never know. You never know. I mean, certainly goats show up in things all the time. Every, every little bit counts to set you <laughs> apart. I also wanted to ask about the experience of doing uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, just because I thought that was a really fun role you got to do. And I was so glad that your character got to come back for a second episode. Oh, yes. Um, That was very fun. My husband, that's my husband, if um, who plays my husband on the show and um, his, uh, his best friend is, uh, Eric Gurian, who is Tina Fey's producing partner. And I guess they were racking their brains on like who could play this hipster couple. And um, we got a call and he was like, are you guys free next week? Do you want to play a random hipster couple on our show? And we were like, yes, that sounds so fun. Um, So that, uh, yeah, that was a dream for me. and for him, it, we, you know, we basically just got to go and like be super silly. Um, and then we were, I'm, I was, I mean, I loved the show. I loved everyone on it. Um, but also Carol Kane is like a God in my mind. So I was very thrilled about that. Um, but we were both supposed to come back Um Eric called him and was like, do you guys, you know, we've written you back in. And my husband, Evan, happened to be working out of town. And he was like, that's okay. We're just going to write you out and write in that you're now in a thruple. And Zosh is going to come back without you. 
I was like, sorry, not sorry. Bye. <laughs> Um, so hence the throuple. No, it was so fun. And we, we loved doing that. I think the fake Mentos commercial, it was like one of the highlights of my career. That was, <laughs> that was pretty groovy. There aren't many opportunities where you get to do something like that. No, definitely not. I also just adored that show. I mean, Ellie is a genius. Everyone, you know, Tina, Robert Carlock, they're all just, that show is forever has a special place in my heart. So I felt very honored to be a part of it and that we got to do that together. You know, that was super fun too. I was going to ask like, it, you know, had you, have you gotten to do much acting in, do you want to do more acting with your husband? We, are, we met doing a play together. So that's how we met. Um, and then the opportunities just haven't arisen that much, you know, and we really, let them come about organically. I think often when two actors are together, sometimes the project or the characters can become overshadowed by the fact that people know that you are a couple in real life. And so I think we're very conscious about that, that like we never want that to be sort of like the talking piece of whatever we do together. So something like Kimmy, which was super silly and sort of a small thing, we were like, oh yeah, that's really fun and that won't matter. Um, but we love to work together. Um, we just, I think, wait for it to come organically. And then even when it does, we're just, um, yeah, we're just specific about it. No, it makes sense. I mean, I feel like it's always vaguely uncomfortable when you watch something that's clearly made by somebody working out their relationship issues and you know, <laughs> totally yeah and then, and then they're like their real life partner is sometimes involved and you're like I don't need to be watching your couples therapy session totally totally and uh I also want to make sure I ask about uh the film Wiener Dog just because you got to have some screen time oh. with some great 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 legends and you know it, I know, I'm, I know it wasn't like a huge role necessarily, but what was that experience like? Uh, it was incredible. It was wild. Um, I was super excited to get that part. Um, I mean, Ellen is a legend indeed. And that was pretty exceptional. Um, and it was only a couple of days of work, but um, I loved and savored every second of it. Um, and I really loved that, that movie as well. Um, and that was the first time I think I got to go to Sundance doing press for, for that film. And I got to do press with her, which was also incredibly special. Um, so yeah, that was, that, that was a, that was a highlight moment. I will say I had, <laughs> I had a very, you know, there's like, I feel like you hear these sayings, particularly growing up in the industry, there are those cliche sayings like never act with a baby or an animal. And you're sort of like, yeah, okay. Um, sure. I've never had to act with a baby. My husband has, and it nearly killed him. Um, and there were two wiener dogs on this shoot. And it was so insane watching a set literally being brought to its knees by like these tiny purebred dogs because they just like there were days where they were just like we don't feel like cooperating or like one day one of them got a stomach ache and was just like sorry I'm out and we were just like it was like what are we doing why are we not I thought we were and they were like we're holding for the dogs we're holding for the dogs and you were like mm -hmm, totally never act with a baby or an animal <laughs> I was like I get it now I get it <laughs> um I, I, I'm very curious is did what did you learn about doing press specifically from Ellen you know we did so much press for girls it basically took up like almost our entire hiatus often because we were doing award shows and then I mean it was awesome but I'd done it so much to that point that I feel like I'd had a, I'd had quite a lot of practice and I'd learned a lot of lessons the hard way um I think more than anything, it was just really enjoyable doing it with her. Like I often, I would just zone out in interviews and then they would be like, and sorry, Zasha. And I would be like, oh yeah, what? Sorry. Like, I just felt like I was a fly on. I just wanted to watch her talk about stuff. I just wanted to watch her talk. I was like, I, I would just want to sit here and watch you talk. 
um, or like make the press people go away and just sit here and talk to you over tea. <laughs> um, so yeah, but absolutely, she's a pro and was amazing. And um, I think the biggest thing that is still so hard when doing press is how to not answer a question you don't want to answer gracefully, like without just saying, I, I, to this point, I just say, I don't want to answer that question. I, you know, I just, I'm blatant about it. I'm like, sorry, I'm not going to answer that question, but it's always incredible to watch a season pro not answer a question, but still answer it in a way that the interviewer like somehow feels like they actually got an answer to the question they asked when they totally didn't. And she <laughs> was a f- ace at that. She could do that like without skipping a beat. I was like, you just fully answered a different question, like not even about this movie. And the interviewer was like, yes, totally. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Because I don't know. It's like, I don't like snake. It's like, she knew how to like snake term them. And I think that's probably just like years in the saddle of knowing how to navigate that. Um, And it was flawless. And that was something that I didn't learn how to do it from her, but I certainly was impressed by watching her do it. I think I've been on the other side of that. And yeah, it's always like, it's it's, it's masterful when it's done. Totally. And then you probably go through your notes and you're like, wait, they didn't answer. I thought they answered that question. And you're like, why do I have a weird thing about their mom's casserole in here? Like, what? <laughs> how did that happen? They just like, they just wove that tail. They tricked yeah, you. It did. But oftentimes, I think actually, to be completely honest, what often happens is the answer you get isn't necessarily what you're looking for, but it's always usually a pretty interesting story. Absolutely. I mean, and I think that's how they do it. They still give you interesting information. It's just, they probably didn't want to give you an answer to the question you asked. Oh, yeah but they give you something else that makes you feel like you got something still. And you probably did, but it's just, it's, yeah. It's fascinating when you get to see that in action. You're like, ooh, well played, yes. I'm just really glad in the course of this conversation, you haven't said to me, I don't want to answer that question. No, you you didn't ask any uncomfortable questions. I find it rare that that happens. Yeah, most people are pretty polite, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um. Well, now that we've established that I haven't made you feel totally uncomfortable, um, mm-hmm. uh, I uh, I do want to make uh, before we wrap up. I, I'm curious. Uh, you know, you've got season two of Flight Attendant on the Horizon. Uh, you're doing a little work right now. Uh, what can you tease about what's coming up for you? Um, I I've sort of been holding a beat to see, you know, what interesting things would come up potentially in our hiatus before flight attendant would go back, but I haven't been pressing anything. You know, I think if the pandemic taught us anything, it's that like taking a break isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, And I've been taking this time to work on a lot of things that I wanted to develop. Um, I'm working on, it's nothing that's been announced yet. So I'm going to be very vague about it all, but I'm working on two writing projects, um, not screenwriting, um, which are taking up quite a bit of time and are super fun. And like a really, it started during the pandemic when work was not available and we didn't know when it would be. And so they're projects that have been bouncing around in my brain for quite some time. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, get these going. So, um, I just sold to a publisher, which, um, who I love and I feel very excited. I adore my editor. So I'm working on those. Um, and then I have a couple other things, like some things I've optioned and some stuff that I have in development, something of my own and a few things with friends and just sort of like, um, I'm kind of like planting a little, a little garden of projects and, uh, and seeing what grows first and then just waiting to go back to my flight attendant day job. <laughs> it sounds like, uh, your interest right now is in kind of helping to really craft the stories that you're going to be involved in. Yeah. I mean, I obviously like, you know, I'm doing these, these things this week that came up and, um, you know, I've been reading a lot and, uh, if I've, I'm super open if something were to come up that were to really excite me or 
um, yeah, just like sort of hit that funny bone in the right way. Um, I love what I do as an actor and I'm always down to do it. But um, I think the sad thing about what uh, happened with the pandemic is there's much less being made. It costs so much more to make it with all of the COVID protocols, which obviously are so necessary, but so there's just a lot less material out there. And so there aren't as many opportunities and also there's less to choose from in terms of what calls to you. So I've just been trying to be kind of like open hand about that and trust that if the right thing comes before we go back to flight attendant, that's great. But I love developing stuff. I love seeing things go from a seed into full bloom. Um, and I've gotten to really dive in with some creative folks that I'm super close with. So that's also been really fun to create things with good friends. So yeah, I've just been trying to take advantage of that. Well, thank you again so much for doing this today. Um, yeah. And I'm really excited to see what happens with season two and beyond. Thank you. It was so nice chatting with you. Nice chatting with you too. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.